Good luck. <laughs> A game featuring talking animals is exactly the kind of thing you would expect from Nintendo, but that is only one of the many attributes these creatures have, as they can fly spacecraft, as well as shoot down enemy craft, and all while looking extremely cute and cuddly. And the game I am talking about here is Star Fox on the Super Nintendo. Possibly one of the greatest SNES games ever released. Star Fox is a rail shooter in a third person and first person 3D perspective. The player must navigate Fox's spacecraft, an R Wing, through environments while various enemies try and take them down. Control of the R Wing includes thrusters and retro rockets on the R Wing, allowing the player to temporarily speed up or slow down. These can be used to manoeuvre around enemy attacks and other obstacles. Damage is incurred incrementally via loss of shield energy before the destruction of the craft. The game also has a small degree of locational damage detection. If the ship's wings clip against obstacles or the ground too much, they will break off, adversely affecting the craft's handling and removing the ability to upgrade weapons. <laughs> Along the way, various power-ups are placed in the stage to help the player. The player receives a score at the end of each level based on how many enemies have been destroyed and how well the player has defended their teammates. At the end of each level, there is a boss that the player must defeat before progressing to the next level. A really neat and different feature compared to other games of the same type was the difficulty setting. Instead of the usual easy normal hard settings and the options, you guide Fox through three different routes with each providing various levels of difficulty. The player always starts off from the base in Corneria and ends up at Venom for the final confrontation with Andros. But how you get there is up to you at the start of the game. This method of difficulty variance allows for more longevity in the playtime, as the levels in hard mode are different from medium and easy and so on. When the game first appeared at trade shows, a lot of gamers were surprised to see the use of polygons on a console game. 
polygon graphics had been the preserve of PC adventure games and some more recent Amiga and Atari ST titles as well. The Super NES was not capable of utilising polygons on its own and required the use of a special chip located in the cartridge itself. The Super FX chip, as it would come to be known, was used to render 3D polygons and to assist the Super Nintendo in rendering advanced 2D effects. The chip was designed to act like a graphics accelerator and reduce the burden on the main CPU of the SNES for these graphical effects. The end result was a game that looked years ahead of its time on console, and also a very expensive game. You see, adding in extra chips bumps up the price. And considering in 1993, Super NES games were already typically 5 to £10 more expensive than other console games, it did make it one of the more expensive SNES games about. Nintendo decided to bundle it with a Super NES shortly after release, but punters who already owned a Super Nintendo had to pay about 50 quid for the game. Early reviews of the game were very favourable, and my mate picked up a copy of this very soon after release and brought it round to mine. And when I played it for the first time, I loved this game. It was great fun to play, and presented a serious challenge. In fact, I loved this game so much, I even broke my own rule of not buying a game my mate had, and so I ordered a copy on US import in April 93. And this was a game that displaced Street Fighter 2 from my Super Famicom. <laughs> So, what was it about Star Fox that made it such a great game? Well, that's an easy one. It's the gameplay. Hands down, this is one great gem of a game, and the difficulty is pitched just right on each of the settings or routes, and although the score in this game is not important, just advancing and wanting to beat each of the bosses with a full complement of power-ups is motivation enough for me. And then there is the challenge of entering the black hole level, which is something I still haven't been able to do to this day. Another great feature of Star Fox that probably doesn't get enough credit is the sound. The music is perfectly suited to each level, and the explosions are great sounding too. The weird garbled speech between the characters is a little odd, especially as the speech at the start, wishing you good luck, is in English. The graphics are great looking, although everything is a little bit choppy and doesn't run that smooth. It looks kind of weak now, but in 1993, this is how Polygon games moved on just about everything. The little sprite avatars for each of the characters are decent enough and doing their job well to make each one easily distinguishable, but I always felt that some of the colours on them looked just a little washed out.
Overall, Star Fox is such a great game to play, even today. And when playing it for this video, once I got started, I got totally hooked on it again and played it for hours. It has to be up there with Super Mario World and Super Mario Kart. And all of those games have one thing in common. They all have Shigeru Miyamoto's genius behind them. And that was my look back at Star Fox on the Super Nintendo. Please do give it a play at your earliest convenience. And while you're doing that, don't forget to give me a sub and a thumbs up if you like this video. That's all from me folks. Thanks for watching.